Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Plank Code podcast. Today's guest has been to 21 countries in the past five months, sharing vegan food from around the world. Over 30,000 followers on a combined lifestyle and food blogger, food blogger Instagram accounts. I'm getting emotional now, that's so many <laughs> followers. I'll put a link down below anyway for those. And she's also an entrepreneur and a plant based advisor. She even provides a free consultation, so do check her out. Seiko Major, welcome to the Blanco Podcast. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here speaking with you. Well, it's a pleasure. We're in a very nice location as well, aren't we? This is the hotel you're staying at. You're living the life. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we are really excited to be here at the Four Seasons Dubai, uh, especially because they have a new wellness vegan menu that really? we're having the opportunity to check out wow. and give them feedback on. Okay, so cool. we feel very, very spoiled yeah. to be yeah. the, their guests. So if you're in Dubai, do come here. Do check out their menu. It seems like it's going to be amazing. Maybe we'll go for lunch after. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I do want to say we are currently on the 21 vegan voyage, but this is country 10. So we still have 11 uh, out in front okay. of us. I oversold you. No that worries. Bit. No worries. Well, and, and then we have a couple. Uh, we've been to Colombia and in New Zealand and Mexico, but they weren't, you know, part of the vegan voyage. Oh, so, right. okay, cool. Uh, yeah. So it's a lot more, a little less. It's yeah. somewhere in between. It's a exactly. lot of countries. You know? <laughs> yeah. Just follow on Instagram and you'll see it all anyway. So. <laughs> That's right. Anyway, so where did it all start for you? Why did you go vegan? Why did I go vegan? Wow. So my heart has been in health and fitness. I love health and fitness. And I've been an animal lover since day one. Uh, beginning of my life, I've loved dogs and bunnies and cats and uh, snakes and rats and all of them, right? Okay. So um, <laughs> I, uh, about five years ago, I really had kind of a coming to God moment of really having to realize that my actions weren't in line with my beliefs. Right. I love animals. I'm an animal lover. And yet I'm participating in these behaviors that are voting with my dollars for other people to have to do really horrific things to animals. And uh, they weren't in line with my my physical and health aligned beliefs. So ingesting milk and animal body parts wasn't in line with the health and fitness beliefs Absolutely. that I had. Yeah. And so it, it was really just kind of feeling like I got to finally align my actions with my beliefs. And a big part of that was was watching the documentary Vegucated. And for whatever for whatever okay. reason, it, that was the right moment for me to really open my eyes and see that I yeah. needed to make a change. That's the first time I've heard someone mention Vegucated as that kind of turning point for them. Most people come in with a more of a cowspiracy earthlings approach. So yep. that's an interesting way for it. Yeah. So you're talking a lot about the health aspect of it. Yeah. So, I mean, we're sold all the time through media that milk is good for the makes the body strong yeah. right and and we have heard from our friends who are olympians that they can't consume dairy during any part of their training or their performance and yet during the olympics uh you know we're sold that drink milk to be strong like Olympians. Yeah. we're sold a lot of false information yeah. about uh meat the the hormones, the antibiotics that are put yeah. in animal bodies that are we're then ingesting and creating superbugs through antibiotics. Um, the, the list goes on and it on. It does. And especially in the U.S., there's a huge lobby when it comes to the dairy industry. And you guys are from the U.S., aren't you? Oh, yes, we are. Actually, I forgot to mention Brian is also here. Just say a quick hi, Brian. Hello, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the podcast as well. We'll get back to Seika. She's the one who does all the talking. <laughs> Brian's just the pretty face. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> She's the brains. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, tell us about, you're from California. Yes. So how's the vegan scene over there? Yeah, the vegan scene's incredible. So we, uh, Brian and I met in Los Angeles and Los Angeles is you know, known to be one of the vegan heavens. Uh, right. We've got so many incredible vegan restaurants. We've got vegan fast food. Okay. We've got very high-end, fine vegan dining. Yeah. We've got vegan street fair once a Whoa. month, which is an event where food trucks come out and people get to party and just enjoy the vegan, you know, yeah. the vegan street fair. Uh, so that's that's really exceptional to yeah. be able to have so many vegan. Have you options. been to Moby's vegan restaurant, Little Pine? Yes. Have you? I really want to go. I love Moby. He's actually one of the main reasons I became vegan. Really? Yeah. I mean, I never actually liked his music. Okay. So if you're listening to this, Moby, <laughs> I, I apologize. <laughs> but I was. Uh, your TED talk is amazing, and I really found it very inspiring. And just the way he expresses his love for animals, I find that so touching. So how's his restaurant? So I I feel the same way. Moby is is no holds barred. He's he speaks the truth and speaks it really directly and he's using his celebrity and yeah. his influence to do enormous good in the world. Um, 
so Brian actually took me on a birthday, surprise birthday date, and we went to Lil Pine, and it's it's just such a glorious restaurant because the food is very natural. It's very whole foods, plant-based oriented. It's healthy and really good food. Okay. Really good food. And yeah. then 100% of proceeds go to animal rights yeah, organizations. Yeah, that's amazing as well. So it's like y- you feel great about every dime yeah. you spend. Yeah. Have you met him? I've not met no? Moby, but Moby, I hope you are listening. <laughs> like, can we can we meet? Yeah, come <laughs> come join us. We'll have dinner together or yep. come to Dubai. We'll be on the podcast or we'll all come to L.A. Anything. We're Perfect. up for anything. I mean, yeah. you guys have been to 20, oh, well, not quite 21 not countries quite 21. yet, Yeah. but you're going to. So, I mean, you're always up for a road trip, that's aren't right. you? That's right. So, I saw on your website, forgoodnesssakes.com, mm-hmm. You were at an elephant sanctuary. Yes. Yes. So we, in Thailand, we yeah. went to Elephant Nature Park. Okay. And um, have you are you familiar with Love and Bananas, the documentary? No, but so I will check it out and put a link to it. Yes, please yeah. do. And it's, it's actually outlawed in a few countries uh, because the nature of the documentary is really exposing some harsh truths about okay. the elephant. Uh, elephant practices and elephant riding is a main area that countries like Thailand are making money Uh, it's they brings in a lot of tourist and tourist money and so they're very very hesitant to do anything that will disrupt that okay they also have a lot a lot of the knowledge that is passed in Thailand is tribal knowledge so learning from elders within your own environment is really how how knowledge is passed so having somebody new come in and say what you've been practicing for a long time is not right uh-huh. is it's vi- it's a very hard truth to deal okay. with that sounds like a really good documentary yeah so yeah. what it deals with is is how people are cruel to elephants through uh through elephant riding yeah. and how they treat them and, and what was the name animals. of the um elephant sanctuary that you went to so we went to elephant nature park okay. and that is the sanctuary that love and bananas is based off of okay and it has to do with really taking all of the harm away from interacting with elephants and really treating them with love. They're incredibly social creatures. What's also really powerful about Elephant Nature Park is that it's not uh, Lek, the, the heroic woman who leads Elephant Nature Park, says it's, sure, it's Elephant Nature Park, but really we're more of a Noah's Ark. And truly, elephants are just a great poster child for all of the animals. Yeah, everyone loves there. elephants. Yeah. Everyone loves animal uh, elephants, and it's really easy to get excited about these gorgeous, exotic creatures. Yeah. Uh, it's really easy to get your heart wrapped up around them, uh, and it's really great to have people kind of lock on to the elephant and then be able to transition that love and see that the way that we're interacting with the animals that are regularly mm. on our plates is the same way that the, these elephants are being abused. So you, you get people to associate the abuse with animal with elephants and then kind of start to move that over to see that that's how yeah. we're interacting with cows, that's how we're interacting with pigs. That's a really interesting approach to it. Yep, yep. So it's a completely vegan sanctuary. While you're there, you're eating yeah. 100% vegan food, which you would think is how all sanctuaries are, and unfortunately it's not. Yeah, uh, I was having a discussion on my past episode when we were talking about pet food about vets as well how for example you'd think all vets would be vegan but most vets aren't actually vegan so they choose this species of loving certain animals and yet not others right so i was i'm still looking for a vet to kind of explain that to me and uh, but i try and avoid going to vets because my pets are quite healthy so far so <laughs> yes <laughs> anyway so which of the countries you've been to so far would you say is the most vegan friendly most vegan friendly hands down no challenge no competition is taiwan really yes Taipei, we couldn't make it to all. We didn't have enough room in our schedule or stomachs to make it to all of the amazing. I would never have guessed Taipei was on the top of that list. We didn't either. Yeah, yeah. It was so easy to get around. People were so nice, yeah. and there there are vegan restaurants everywhere. So uh, a big reason for the large vegan population is that they are uh, high, there's a large proportion of Buddhists. And they take it, it, they, in Taiwan specifically, that religion is taken to be um, a a vegan, 100% vegan. They live their life that way. And I also saw some very interesting pictures of you two doing yoga. Yes. (laughs) And I was talking about the spiritual side and the lifestyle side. So 
did you get into yoga before you got into veganism or did you get into veganism before you got into yoga? Yeah, I, I got into yoga before I got into veganism. Okay. And we started acro yoga maybe a year and a half yeah. ago. And it's a really powerful practice, mind, body, and spirit. And it's it's also really interesting that you bring this up. It's similar to the, to the veterinarian comment that you made is in a lot of our yoga classes, we have the yoga instructor speaking love love to all harm to none and i excitedly get up yeah. and i'm like oh so you're you're vegan and they're like no i should be but i'm not and yeah so you absolutely th- should be yeah. right that's actually the previous episode of the podcast always the two before was actually with a yoga teacher and we were discussing the whole ahimsa and the lack of cruelty and i mean i don't know anything about yoga i know a little bit more since talking to jumana two weeks ago which was great but yeah i mean it's true it does seem to be a real link between yoga and veganism and how yoga goes way beyond just the physical practice of it it's a whole spiritual and mental thing right so on the flip side which was the least vegan friendly country that you've been to (sighs) so there have been a there have been a couple that have been a bit of a struggle um vietnam was the toughest okay and a big reason for that was um lactose intolerance doesn't seem to be uh, there, there doesn't even seem to be an awareness around that right? are you so actually lactose intolerant or is it just an excuse to not eat dairy products <laughs> so it, it used to be that i would be like i will die if yeah. i eat milk please don't feed it to me yeah. right it's a really good excuse uh but it actually i was accidentally fed i'm i'm cr- heavy cream i i think because i this is probably not podcast talk but I, I projectile vomited after okay so i think that i've developed yeah. lactose intolerance yeah. um there's always some gruesome details in these episodes i've talked about <laughs> dog poo i've talked about human poo it's all it's all kind of exits uh, get into vomit now i love it yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's exactly what i dreamed of when i started doing this <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> bodily function is very important though. yeah yeah so yeah. i think i think that i actually have developed a, a lactose intolerance yeah. and it, it doesn't it doesn't sit with me so in a lot of countries when you say i i can't have cow milk they go okay we understand in vietnam it seemed to be like very conf- they they ha- were very confused by that concept right. i'd say i can't have it if it hurt I, my, my new thing is <laughs> i say i can't have it if it hurt an animal and people uh, you know it's kind of i yeah. should maybe soften that up but a, a lot of bit, people think that milk that when they take milk from a cow it doesn't hurt the animal right. and that they produce the milk anyway because they have to and if we don't milk them their udders are going to explode right I believe that. Yeah. Yeah. I did used to believe okay. that. Okay. By the way, it's not the case. It's not the case. Yeah. Only pregnant females produce milk. Yeah. Mammals. Yeah. How do they get pregnant, though? Well, Ugh. you have to forcibly impregnate them, don't you? So. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, Vietnam was tough. Uh, when I said I will get sick if I have milk um, at one restaurant, we actually had somebody directly lie to us about there being milk. And we knew because a kitchen staff had just checked with the chef. Right. Come, came and told us that there yeah. was in fact milk in the food that we were eating and then the manager came up and said oh no 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 there's there's so do you think not. it's a lack of knowledge understanding or they just don't really care it must be that they don't understand the, right. the, like a sickness because i don't think that anybody would directly cause someone to get sick yeah of course. um so but uh, yeah i think there's a lack of understanding there yeah how did you actually choose these countries and why you're going to these ones in particular yeah, so there are, we, we wanted to have a, a s- large variety of countries um, and be able to really feel like we were kind of going across the globe and getting a taste of a lot, literally, <laughs> a taste of a lot literally, of different yeah. places. And uh, so a, a lot of the countries were selected because they've been on Brian or my dream list for a while. Um, and then we kind of scratched most of the ones that we have previously been to. There are okay. a few exceptions to that. Uh, so that they're new places for us. And then we also wanted to choose a- as direct of a path as we could so that we're reducing our carbon footprint. So we're really doing a good job of um, pr- promoting veganism, of connecting the vegan community across the globe, of advertising a wide var- like advertising how easy it is to be vegan in a lot of these different places. I mean, I, I spoke about how difficult Vietnam was, and yet we did it 
just fine. Yeah, absolutely. So it's it's just about making some adjustments and showing people how to do it and that you can do it right. and making it something fun and enjoyable. So you're taking a bit of an educational stance as well? Or yes. Okay. Absolutely. And have you put on weight? Because all you do is eat. Like all I see you guys do <laughs> is just stuff your face <laughs> the whole time. It's like, uh, it was like, hey, look, an ice cream. Hey, look, an amazing burger. That's you know, right. It's like constant food everywhere. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think we have. Right. I think Brian lost a few pounds. Okay. Um, <laughs> I haven't weighed myself. Okay, but don't do it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. What does it mean? Who are you trying to impress? That's you know, right. At the end That's of the day. right. Uh, but we're, we're also very, very active. Like I said, I love fitness. We're at the right. gym a lot just because that's how I, um, that's my body's love language. Yeah. My body loves to be exercised. So okay. I, uh, mental health and physical health, I have to, I have to keep up exercise. So right. it, uh, we don't really, we don't think about it much. Okay, good. Yeah. I mean, you've got other things to think about. You're super right. busy running all over the world anyway yeah and um, actually there's one more thing i wanted to get into about that which i can't remember what it was but that'll come back to me yeah and um so you actually you have your website yes and you're providing with free consultations for people and you putting vegan food on menus helping sort out these menus like how did you come to this idea yeah so this started um <laughs> this started wow that's a really great question uh, when we were living in Los Angeles, so we most recently we lived for a year in the San Francisco Bay Area, which also has a, a great vegan community. It does not, it has a really strong vegan community and has some really, really remarkable new vegan products. There's vegan meats mm. and cheeses that are just mind blowing that are coming out of the San Francisco Bay Area. Vegan restaurants are way fewer than there are in Los Angeles, which is really interesting. Um, but, but the community is so strong up there. So that's a, that was a side note. But when we lived in Los Angeles, I, uh, I s decided that I, one way that I wanted to help the vegan community was to go on Yelp and review. Pl I'm very outspoken. I don't mind asking questions to people. And so I was like, I'm going to go on and every restaurant that we go to that doesn't have vegan items on their menu, I'm going to review them and say how to kind of do, do it yourself vegan item at this restaurant. Okay. So I'd ask the questions and then write reviews. And, uh, they the, rev the my reviews were getting a crazy number of views so really? i think i had like 12 reviews up and i had 90,000 views of them in the first on yelp on yeah okay. so people obviously were searching the term vegan in the s in the reviews to see if they could find something vegan and my oh. reviews were popping up so it I, it was like okay there's something there's something here right yeah, yeah you had no this. real idea behind that originally right. did you i yeah. was just like i'm a, i don't know yeah. maybe people will find this useful yeah. so uh, then I start, I, when I would go into these restaurants and start asking these questions, I would have the, usually in boutique restaurants, I'd have these chefs that were also the owners come up and say, hey, can you try this and like, let me know what you think? Because I have no idea how to make vegan food. So we went to some friends of ours who own restaurants and said, do you think that this could be useful to help design vegan menus? And they said, hands down, absolutely. We have okay. no idea how to create that. Right. And so, you know, before I had been thinking, there's no way that that would be interesting. Like, I, people don't need help designing vegan menu items. You just you don't put animal products in it. <laughs> but it turns out that, <laughs> that uh, they did, that people did find, that have need for that. So we uh, went to some very good friends and mentors of ours who own restaurants in Los Angeles uh, called Two Guns Cafe. Okay. Uh, two, two Guns Espresso. Sorry, not Two Guns Cafe. Two Guns Espresso. I'll put a link to them as well. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they're they're incredible people. And yeah. we went to them and said, "Hey, can we can we try this out? Can we, you know, help you design a vegan menu?" And they actually did an exceptional job of putting together a vegan menu at that ha based primarily on ingredients that they already source, brought in some new items like Miyoko's butter, for example, uh, renamed some menu items. So okay. they had like an avocado toast that was already vegan, right. but they just named it the vegan avocado toast and actually saw sales in, I think, triple. Yeah, Do you remember the stats? Brian, you're here for the numbers. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you had one job. <laughs> but... Yeah, I mean, that's interesting what you say is like the name, the word vegan now has gone way beyond the lifestyle, the ethics. It's now become a brand. And yep. there are a lot of people getting on board with that. You see Burger King are bringing in a vegan burger. They have, I mean, they're not necessarily interested in animal welfare. They're not interested in the environment, but they see there's a marketing potential there. Right. And they're using that. Yep. Some people think that's good. Some people think that's bad. Personally, I think it 
it's good because it puts veganism on the menu. It makes people talk about it. It puts an option to the mainstream public. Does that mean that I'm going to support Burger King? No. Does it mean that I'm going to eat it? Not necessarily. But if it gives people who already go to those outlets an, an option, a different option that doesn't involve cruelty and doesn't involve slaughtering animals, then let it be for the time being until we have a 100% vegan world. Absolutely. Yeah. So the question I wanted to ask you earlier that I completely forgot was how are you financing your trip? Like, d like honestly, like you've been to so many places. Like, look at this hotel. It's amazing. Uh, like, it's nice. Yeah. I'm going to pretend I'm cool and I'm used to being in this kind of places, but no. So how are you financing your trip? So we would not have, uh, this is glorious. We do not have the funds um, on a five month trip to be staying at glorious, beautiful yeah. hotels like this. So we are guests of the Four Seasons. Ah, okay. Yes. So we're trying out their vegan menu. We are going to be showing how glorious this place is to stay. Right. And, uh, you know, including them in the blog and all of that. And so luck, we are very lucky to be hosted by them that's, for this one that's like the dream it, it's it's really wonderful yeah. we feel so grateful it doesn't happen all the time the last hotel that we were staying at in dubai we you know we were funding ourselves we're being frugal and how we're doing it yeah. um and we we brian and i have both worked very very hard in corporate careers up until this point right. and uh have have been able to save a lot of money and put it towards this so that's i mean it's amazing that you managed to combine the passion for travel the passion for promoting a healthier lifestyle and a less cruel lifestyle and yet you're getting to benefit from it as well and yeah. staying in nice places and then helping them move towards a more vegan friendly environment as well that's right whereas we always we always tend to look down on people who are trying to do good things but are in comfortable situations whereas i think we need to kind of work past that mm -hmm. and they get more involved in whatever resources we have put it together and make that change as well yeah but do you think it's actually possible to have a hundred percent plant-based world yes Wow, that's a very confident answer. Yes. I, this has come up a couple of times, and I'm um, probably the only one who thinks it, but I'm, I'm so sure that we can get there. Yeah. And I think, I think that we, we have to, Brian and I were talking about the kind of the philosophy of this uh, a little while ago of what should that future goal be. And I think that having our eyes set on that goal can be really powerful. I mean, um, having a vision for having a world without cruelty and having a world that's truly sustainable not just the yeah. cute sustainable word that people pl can stamp on anything these days but truly having a sustainable planet that causes uh, s significant reduction yeah. in harm to creatures i think we can get there great i mean that's what we're working towards yeah. isn't it? i mean there's so much hypocrisy in it you see like organic food in uh for example in supermarkets and it's going to be wrapped six times in plastic and there's a real strange kind of approach to it and they are labeling a lot like we mentioned and i did an episode recently with uh, sophie benker from anonymous for the voices in switzerland and we were talking about activism and normalization of acti activism and about uniting people and getting everyone involved in making some form of difference like obviously we want this perfect 100 percent plant-based world we're not there yet we're miles away from it but if everyone can at least work towards it and make a step whether it be vegans environmentalists um, health-based people yogis we all just need to get active and right it's the system that right. we have that is the problem right to work towards this 100 percent plant-based world that's why i don't want to get too much into the philosophy of it because mm -hmm. i mean we could dream a whole new world and i look forward to that world but right now the world we live in let's just try and make a small impact on that and change that now absolutely so how do you build a vegan menu so the the number one thing that we've heard from our friends and mentors who are restaurant owners is that bringing in new ingredients can be one of the biggest barriers right. for restaurants. It can be really tough for them. They're worried about not being able to say they bring in a completely vegan item. They now have to be worried. Will it sell? Right. And yeah. like you and I know it has that, to be viable. Yeah. Right. You and I know that majority of the time the vegan item is the one that they run out of because people are so excited about that item these days. Yeah. But, uh, you know, you still want to, you want to be able to buffer for that and make them feel comfortable. So it's most of the time you can go in and look at a menu and say, you just snags the, the vegetables over here, some more substantial items over here, yeah. make sure that it's something that's going to be heavy and filling enough. I shouldn't say heavy, but filling enough to really have someone be satisfied. Right. Uh, that's been a problem that we've run into quite a bit is that especially in fine dining, you know, if you're serving, if a chef is used to serving a six ounce 
chunk of animal, it's going to be far more filling than a six ounce chunk of cauliflower. Yeah. So if you have a cauliflower steak, it, you've got to have quinoa on there. You have to have, you know, substantial avocado. You have to have something else to really right. help it feel filling so that people aren't yeah. starving at the end of it. Uh, and then another really easy to sell trick for restaurants is something that will save them a lot of money is you don't serve any animal products uh, up front. You can have items that are add-ons that are animal products. And often those add-ons like ranch, don't serve something just with ranch, have that as an additional, an add-on that people can add. And those items are often going to be uh, the more expensive items anyway. So people will have like just sitting out okay, buckets of yeah, ranch. Yeah. So instead of removing the sauce, you have to add the sauce. Yes. That's a very interesting way to approach it. You're and kind of bre branching and creating a bridge between the vegan option and the non-vegan option by promoting the vegan option first. I like exactly that. That's a right. very good uh, way to approach it. It's exactly right. And it saves the company money. Yeah. And it also helps them connect with this sustainability trend, if we want to call it a trend, yeah. uh, that, that comes up. You can put a sign out that says, we in a movement towards sustainability and a movement toward you know a reduction in harm, whatever whatever verbiage they, we can work out together, uh, we want to, we are conserving on animal products. You're welcome to have it, just ask. Right? If they don't want to charge extra, fine. But you can put a note out that makes people think about it, and they just yeah. have to request it in order yeah. to get it. Yeah, I can. It's it's really conflicting inside me because it's kind of like you're still they're still serving animal products, but at the same time you're offering a solution to reduce it. It's like trying to find that perfect balance, like I just mentioned. Like it's it's not there. So if you, what we need is like I said, the outreach is right. to reach people and to get people to see a different viewpoint. So it's good that you're kind of suggesting that and. Okay, two things I want to talk about now that are very important to me. Why, I mean, I don't know if you have an answer to this question, but why are vegan burgers always so dry? <laughs> That's hysterical. Um, have you, what vegan burgers have you had? You know when you get like the falafel burgers oh, gosh, and all these yeah. kinds of, what's, why don't they put sauce in them? I, well, I don't know. It's such a good question. Yeah. You need to put sauce on them. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's always the question. driest thing ever. So at the Four Seasons Macau that we had, we were so lucky to get to be guests of, of theirs as well. We didn't stay at the hotel, but we went and tried their vegan menu and uh, they did some exceptional things. One of them, and I know the Impossible Burger is kind of, uh, you know, peop, people, there, there's big debate about the Impossible Burger right now, but they took their Impossible Burger and they actually soak it in coconut oil. I hope I'm not giving away trade secrets. I think they said this was okay for us to say. <laughs> Too <laughs> late now. Yeah. Everyone's going to be doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Before they cook yeah. it to make it super, super moist. Okay. And so that that was one thing that the, they said that they did. Um, have you had the Beyond Burger? Yes, I have. What do you think about it? I love it. I mean, I used to love meat. And yeah. I'm a huge uh, junk food fan. Yeah. I used to love bacon. I'm not afraid to say it. It's not because it tastes good that now I realize that I don't want people to right. slaughter animals for it. But it still tastes good. Yeah. So any meat replacement product, I know it's not healthy. Yeah still processed food healthier than the actual animal food right. for myself and obviously for me it's the whole cruelty part that's the big problem with that i just love it it tastes yeah. amazing the first time i was like someone's tricking me this is this is actually meat but it is incredible and they're doing so well now they're, oh my gosh it's incredible it's grown I'm, like mental brian brian says that i should be beyond's official spokesperson i'm i'm in love with the burger and really? the sausages i, would I haven't had the sausages day. oh my gosh <laughs> Max, you're about your mind's gonna be blown. Really? You could f easily feed it to like your like biggest carnist, and they will say, "This is amazing." Yeah, and I think so if good. you can offer them that product, and you say that you can have this or you can have this, this one's better for your health, better for the environment, and better for the animals, and it tastes just as good. And it's is it cheaper? Uh, probably not right now. But they are right talking they're working about on it. They're working they? on yeah. lowering prices now. I mean, they're 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 yeah. growing su at such extreme rates in the San Francisco Bay Area. We had a <laughs> vegan. Are you chat. sponsored by them or no, what? <laughs> I want to be. I just paid in sausages. Like <laughs> that's it. Not sponsored. <laughs> paid but in, in the, sausages. In the, yeah, in the Bay Area, we had a vegan Facebook chat group right. where like because they were sold out of Whole Foods all the time. Okay. And we would have to go in and like buy them and like give them to our friends because otherwise you couldn't get them. Well, we've got like secret stash we of sausages. We had secret stash of sausages. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. And the other second very important yeah. question, not quite as important as why are the vegan burgers so dry is, okay, this is probably part of what people pay you to tell them. But anyway, 
should people have a separate vegan menu or should they keep the vegan options in the main menu? Yeah, it's a great question. It really depends. A lot of uh, head chefs and restaurant owners have very strong feelings about that. Um, and what we've found is that when, when initially introducing the menu, to have a separate vegan menu can be really powerful for a few reasons. Um, one, it helps vegan people who are ordering feel really safe because yeah. it can be uh you, you, you as a vegan as you know you will get messed up orders a lot and that can be like you will get animal on your plate it's true you order something you're like oh my god i didn't ask this i didn't ask this you're like waiting you got sweat right. drip, yeah. dripping down your face yeah you're you like, did i clarify did i yeah. wait did i sit did i say no cheese three times because they usually don't get the first two yeah. right and so um so that that can make people feel really safe ordering it can also help the server be really clear that it's yeah. a vegan item uh and and it also it sets it apart right so it's a new menu it helps your regulars who are coming in now re re realize that there's very significantly different items uh for the sake of ease for the restaurant not printing out two menus all the time uh having one menu that has very clearly marked vegan items can work just as well so it, it really depends yeah. on, the, on the owner and, the and my chef. fear with having a separate menu and that people have to ask for is that it's not going to be exposed to the non-vegans it's mm -hmm. only going to be a vegan a menu for vegan people yep. so the people who aren't actually vegan who might be curious or are willing to try something new they're not necessarily going to see it yeah that's where i i find it great that they have vegan menus but then the whole thing is about outreach and the exposure and yep. you don't necessarily get that with the two separate menus yeah what, what what we've found is that most restaurants will give both to everyone they want they want these new items to be in front of people i think beyond meat are calling you i don't know if they heard that phone <laughs> yeah. call they want to get in touch they were like okay pay you in sausages <laughs> absolutely <laughs> how many kilos do you want yeah yeah, yeah. uh so i think be, if they're serving both of them they do want those new menu items to be they they want to know they want to have the numbers right. on if these menu items are selling okay and so it's they they are incentivized to as well to make sure that those are getting in front of people cool yeah can i ask you a question you want to ask me something i want to ask you something. i asked all the questions here i'm in control <laughs> all right all right, all right, all right go ahead yeah. ask me ask me anything so you travel and interview people right and when you are traveling and interviewing people do you pick a location that you're going to travel to and then look for interesting people in that location reach out to them say hey i'm i have a podcast can i speak with you that's pretty much how I do it. Usually I use Instagram and okay. I'll be like hashtag uh, vegan Hong Kong or yeah. vegan Manchester, vegan UK. Or there's a lot of people I'm already following or people suggest and I'll reach out and see who's interested in talking and what kind of story they have to share. And if it's, uh, I mean, I'm interested in hearing everyone's story. I don't judge on the amount of followers or however big, however small. I think everyone has a valuable story to tell. Yeah. And I just like to listen to other people talk. I mean, the sound of my voice, I'm tired of hearing it right? and repeating the same stuff. And you learn so much when you talk to people, like talking to you, I learn so much. And I hope people listening will learn a little bit as well and be inspired maybe to start their own vegan entrepreneur business and to travel the world and taste vegan food and not to be afraid to speak out in restaurants and ask for the vegan options and vegan menus as well yeah but about that yeah back on to travel how do you survive on the plane we've so we have to put in special requests this is really important for you guys to know um because it's it's actually not that difficult but i don't think enough people are doing it so you just call in ahead of time and Brian does it, so hopefully he corrects me if I say this wrong. But <laughs> you call in ahead of time and you request a special meal. And you can tell them that you need it to be vegan, and right. then they'll say back to you vegetarian, and then you like yeah. stress out. Usually, you're like, the no. on, you can do it online as well. You, you can, can do it online yeah. as well. But yeah, it's some, and then it, it's coded as VGML, right. and that they will call it vegetarian, but it means vegan. They don't put dairy or egg in it. Okay. And uh, online, we found sometimes it doesn't hold. It doesn't, really? it, like, we get there, and then they're like, oh, we no. don't have your order. When I travel, I always pack my own food. Like, okay. I, I mean, I do order the vegan option yeah. if I can, but I usually bring my own food, because like you too. said, you never know if you it's going to show up. So yeah. when you're checking in a few days in advance, it has to be generally at least 48 hours before. 
Don't forget to choose your vegan meal. Do pack a few snacks just in case. And choose your seat as well whilst you're there. Because otherwise you're going to show up, you're going to get a middle seat and it sucks. Yeah. You don't know when one wants a middle seat. Yeah. And so some some great, great snacks are like dehydrated tofu that have been like marinated in some okay. spicy soy sauce or something yeah. like that. And some dried mango or, you know, you can have whatever, but those are really good ones that you can just keep in your bag, especially yeah. if you're going on a long trip. And bring your own reusable bottle of water. Oh, yeah. That you can have filled up by the flight attendants anytime. Yeah. Also a good travel tip. That's great. I didn't know that one. Yeah, of course you were. I'm always so thirsty because they bring me like this, like little, like yeah, I can think about a water. A tiny cup. I'm like, can you yeah. please fill, just stand yeah. here and I'll yeah, just drink Yeah, just bring it. your own oh, water great. bottle, preferably one that you can refill. It has to be empty when you go through immigration, obviously, and yeah. through the um, security checks. But then, yeah, they'll fill it up for you in however big and however many times. So That's great. It's important to stay hydrated on an airplane. Fabulous. I'll actually do an episode about vegan travel soon. Yeah. So, and how to survive um, traveling and on a plane and all that stuff. Very smart. Yeah, I'll share it to you. Well, actually, you'll probably know quite a yep. lot. And you've got a lot to contribute to yeah. that as well. So, um, and which airline has the best vegan food that you've had so far? Um, it doesn't seem to have been too inspiring. No, no, it's usually not very good. Yeah. but it does the job. You know, it gets the job well, done. Well, plain food is generally not that good yeah. anyway, is it? I suppose. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, I don't. I don't think I have. You one don't have a, a favorite. I don't have a vote. Okay, fair <laughs> enough. Any airline representatives listen to this, you need to pick up on your vegan options. Yeah, yes. Absolutely. Actually, Virgin Atlantic, impo- uh, very interestingly, <gasps> they recently stopped serving beef. Oh, wow. To offset their carbon emissions. Very cool. Yeah. So Brian actually used to travel a lot for work, right. and he would travel on Virgin, and he would bring me, they have um, like vegan brownie snacks. So some of their snacks okay. yeah, were yeah, like yeah, yeah. well thought through yeah. vegan options, because th- that would be something be really yeah. easy to not have be vegan. Yeah, Virgin, I mean, you should go completely vegan. Absolutely. I mean, they're That'd already taking so cool. one step in the right direction, which is great. And that starts the debate. And I think that's what's interesting. And Richard Branson, he's amazing he's anyway. Amazing. I love him. He's so great. Richard, I have a bit of a crush on you. So if ever you feel like being on the podcast, come join me. And I'll be happy <laughs> yeah. to have you. Yeah. We can talk about a fully vegan airline soon. Yes. And I think it was Qantas. I might be wrong, but they just did the first zero waste flight. Oh, amazing. Absolutely. Everything was um, reusable compostable because when you're on a plane the amount of plastic oh my that you see is absolutely outrageous yep. everything you open has plastic yep. and it drives me crazy yeah we are always like don't please don't give it to me if it has plastic don't give it to me yeah. and it's so hard to get away from but you know yeah. the cups that they hand out and stuff and we're like Stop. yeah everything's a single <laughs> use yeah, yeah. It's, it's insane i mean imagine how amazing it would be if every airline went 100 percent vegan just to offset their carbon emissions i mean we know that they don't necessarily have the interest on animal rights or in people's health i mean they're a business they want to make money and that's the way it is but if they just think about from the marketing aspect how they can use that exactly i think that'd be great and that's what's so powerful about the vegan movement right now is i think that in a lot of ways instead of fighting capitalism we're kind of leaning in and going okay we can make this a great marketing tool yeah we can use it yeah exactly and we can say big business you can profit off of this i know that there's there there is still a big debate about that is that a good thing that big business is profiting off of veganism and i say if it's saving animals from the horrible suffering that they're Mm. going through i'm i'm in i think it's a great way for outreach i mean because people are already in bed with the uh, big corporations that are around. If these corporations start showing a little bit more towards the greener, more environmental friendly side, then we can think about getting rid of them later on. You know, right. let's use them whilst we can. And and that's what I'm, I, I, I always say is like, what are we voting for with our dollars? Yeah. Because every dollar is a vote for something Absolutely. and businesses move off of what our dollars are indicating. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you, you use every choice, um, to make a vote in the right direction and slowly but surely th- those are adding up yeah absolutely 100 percent. and um, people always when you talk about veganism and about animals they always say there are so many more important things going on in the world but we eat three times a day mm-hmm. you vote with your dollars three times a day yep. and that's the, sm- the easiest in my opinion the simplest way that you can reduce your impacts on the environment on the welfare of animals and people around the world as well because we always hear the statistics that if the whole world went plant-based, we could feed another right. 11 billion people. So Absolutely. when you talk about um, hunger around the world, it's directly linked to animal agriculture, which is another interesting debate for another time. So Yeah, and those meals, they vote with your dollars toward toward veganism, toward a plant-based planet. And it also indicates to everybody that you're eating around. Like those conversations come up every time and so even if you're not you know doing a big activist movement and you're just ordering lunch and you're eating with people around you who are noticing what you're eating and going huh why why did you order that way you know those ripple effects really mean something yeah you don't know the outreach that it has i mean 
I hope someone is still listening to this episode. I mean, we're, we're a good half an hour, 40 minutes in by now. But I mean, if you're still listening, who knows that you might share it to someone. They might listen to it, might inspire them to try a right. few more plant-based options. And you never know where that's going to lead. Yep. I remember a good friend of mine, he was vegan before me. And I always made fun of him. Like, oh, yeah. you eat salad and blah, blah, blah. And all the usual stupid jokes that we come up with. And then, what, two and a half, three years down the line now, I'm vegan. I have a podcast about veganism, talking to great people like you. So you never know where that's going to lead to. You know, just like one step at a time and yep. we'll, we'll reach great things, I think. That's right. So would you have any tips for any inspirational vegan who's looking to start their own business? Ooh, vegans who are looking to start their own business. Man, half of it is... <laughs> or more, 75% of it is getting out there, trial and error, yeah. starting to practice, getting in the dirt, getting dirty, yeah. messing up. Uh, messing up is a huge part of it. Best way to learn. Yeah. You yeah. you get out there, you do what seems really tough. Uh, you start at the bottom. You start really small. You start really, really small. And that part's really hard yeah. because you look at everybody on social media. You look at people who are out there who are doing huge things. You're listening to podcasts. You're watching on YouTube. You're seeing all these huge things and you're going, if I start, I'm going to have like one follower. Yeah. If I, I recently start, just opened a TikTok account. Yeah. Because I just discovered TikTok and it's great for video and, the so, and like there's a huge like younger generation, like 18 to 24 okay. on it. And I want to get them more into veganism. And I see like they're all just like singing songs and stuff. And I'm trying to post a bit more stuff about like the podcast and little short clips yeah. of it, try and bring them in. And I've got like one follow on TikTok. So if you're listening to this, please follow me on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that, that can be the toughest part. Yeah. Is going, I want to, I want to, I have this in my heart. I want to make a difference. But if I start right now, I'm going to be so small. Yeah. And that's how it goes. And that part's beautiful too. Yeah. So I mean, I mentioned uh, you've got over 30,000 followers with your combined accounts, but. That wasn't always the case, was no. it? No. No. And I, I remember I remember begging for 2000. 2000 was so hard to break. Really? So hard to break. And I was sitting there like, oh, I'm just gotta, I just got to connect with more people and like really like, you know, get engaged yeah. and do it. And, you know, I'm sitting there for three days not being able to push over that 2000 yeah. hump. So it, it's, yeah, you, um, you want to do something big, get out and start, start. Yeah. That's true. I think that's the best way to do it. You just got to get there and take that. F what is it they say? Like the, f the longest journey starts with a single step or yeah. something like that. So, And about social media, I mean, clearly you've mastered it quite well now. I find I waste so much time on it yeah. and I use it a lot when we I could be using that time for more important things. Yeah. So how do you balance the using the social media, which is great. It's an important part of what you do. And then the actual serious content of stuff as well yeah um that is that's such a great question that's we really have brian to work on your social media as well <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um it's a great question we are a great team right. uh, we, i'm feel so blessed to have brian as my teammate because he the way his brain works is just exceptional he can handle so many things and uh we really complement each other in this that's type good. of work yeah. and so this trip has kind of um helped us create a pattern of content planning, content creation, and content production. Okay. It never gets out as fast as I want it to get out. Yeah, uh, that's and that's, that's just how it goes. A lot of it is trial and error and yeah. figuring out how to do it. Consuming social media, not creating content, but consuming because interacting and engaging with the community is such an important part of it. Right. There's, there's an addictive portion of that, right? 100%. Where you're like, oh, wh wh where's the engagement happening? How can I study this data more thoroughly and yeah. figure out what people are liking and how can I you know, pour love into the other people who are contributing? And uh, it can be really tough. And I think putting limits on that is really important so that you're still being really engaged with life because it's, it's too easy to let that stuff um, yeah. take, up, take up all your time. Yeah, to get obsessed by the numbers and then forget the reasons why you're doing it and the feelings behind it. I mean, right. like, I try to move past the numbers and look into the actual human connection that you're creating with someone. I think that's more important than adding numbers onto Instagram, Facebook or followers. Because, I mean, you look at some of the followers, like they follow you, they stop following you, they follow you again. They yeah. And you're like, what's going on here? Is this, like, is this a dance or <laughs> <Yeah>. why? <laughs> I have no idea why people do that. And, yeah, then yeah. You, and then you find some people who are s like, I, I have some followers who I, I love them so much. They're yeah. so engaged. They know what's going on in, in yeah. life all the time. Like we have like true heartfelt relationships. Okay. And I, like people I've never met. Yeah. Actually, I want to mention, uh, I want to mention vegan Danielle, actually, because she helped me a lot. She's, 
I asked her a lot about equipment and she suggested a lot of things to me. Wow. She's been very inspiring because like I'm just starting out and she's very well established. If yeah. you haven't listened to Vegan Daniel's podcast, you should do so. Actually, no, you shouldn't because then you're going to stop listening to mine. So don't <laughs> <laughs> And you'll be appearing on Vegan Daniel's podcast yes. soon, hopefully. So, so excited. We're, yeah. we're working on getting something set up and, and you will too, right? Yeah, so maybe the three of us will meet on Vegan Daniel's That'd podcast. That would be fabulous. That would be amazing. Yeah. I would love that. That, that actually, I, it popped up to me uh, something else that I did want to mention about being an entrepreneur and getting started is as you just mentioned finding mentors yeah so you find somebody and um <laughs> if you don't listen to tim Fer- T- tim ferris is an incredible podcast he created a podcast on um on mentorship and i highly recommend people listen to that because it talks about how to get a mentor and it doesn't mean going to somebody and saying hey how do i do this right because then you're asking for them to you know there's somebody skilled there's somebody that's put a lot of time yeah. into an area that you want to learn uh you want to be really optimize their time and not be a drain on their energy, but really give them an opportunity to help you. It, that's really specified. So like you said, going to somebody who's well-developed in an area that you're looking to get into, come up with really targeted questions that they can help you with yeah. and come to them with those very specific questions. Yeah, not like how do I get an awesome podcast? Right. Yeah. And I've had people come to me with, the, with, with that. And I'm like, how do I do what you do? Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, I care about you. I, don't know how to answer this quickly please like i mean you don't even know really you're still learning aren't you it's a whole process absolutely yeah absolutely yeah and there's no real secrets to it it's hard work that you've put in over the years (laughs) of doing it i mean let's be honest so i want to wrap this up for the i mean i hope some of my non-vegan listeners are still tuning in i mean i think they should because this has been a great episode for non-vegans to listen to and to how to eat in different restaurants so what would you say to the non-vegans that are listening to the non-vegans that are listening thank you for listening thanks for engaging in our community uh you are welcome here you are loved every step toward veganism toward a plant-based lifestyle is it, it is making a positive impact and uh we welcome you with open arms absolutely to, to yeah no that's what i want to break that down is that whole us and them yeah of, of this whole purist mentality of veganism it's like we want everyone like yeah. everyone get involved try the food like do something different try something on your plate talk about it and i think that's the most important way to start so can i can do of we have course, time to mention always got time okay, for okay you. great so uh another thing that we do in the bay area is we host an event that w- ours is called S- south bay vegan drinks um if you know wherever we move next we'll we'll have the same thing okay uh where once a month we invite a dog rescue to come bring available dogs to a brewery where we also invite, uh, so we get puppies drunk. Okay, no, that's, what, that's exactly <laughs> where I went with that thought. I was like, okay, this doesn't sound great. <laughs> and we invite a vegan food truck or a food vendor. They don't have right. to have a truck. Um, and then we have a, a networking event. We'll also sometimes have another animal animal activist group, right? So we've had some, a group called Time to Be Heard, which supports the Asian elephants. Okay. Um, and it's a really fun event. We have it every month. If you're in the Bay Area, come join. Or if you're curious about setting one of these up for your own community, hit me up. I'm happy to just give you, I've written it up for some other people before kind of how we right. created it. And I'll just send that over to you so you can yeah. kind of have like a template. I will template. put links to the Seikers, various websites, Great. Instagrams and all this stuff. So it'll all be there. Just reach out to her to get something happening. And yeah. also we've recently started a Facebook page with the ve- uh, Dubai Vegan Community. So do Perfect. check that out if you're in Dubai. We're going to be organizing some events over the next Perfect. few months as well. So and and it's yeah. such a great way to have to get people from all these different interest groups involved because you have people who are coming because they love dogs and they want to hang yeah. out with puppies. Yeah. You have people because they love beer and they want to be there I for love beer. yeah they yeah. want to be there Vegan for the beer. beer yeah and we have people who are coming for just the social aspect and yeah. we're able to get that all wrapped up into one and we have regulars who aren't vegan and who are interested in it and kind of veg curious and heading in that direction that's beautiful yeah Seika thank you so much for coming to talk to me Brian come over once again come and say hi to the camera. <laughs> Look at this beautiful couple that they are. Thank you. It was great to have you on the show, and I look forward to chatting to you again soon. Enjoy the rest of your travels. Where are you going next? Tanzania. Tanzania. I look forward to seeing you. Guys, thanks for listening to the Planko Podcast. Have a great day and chat to you soon. Bye-bye. Bye.